Welcome to Kansas Ag Report with your host, Ryan Hallman. Welcome to Kansas Ag Report. I'm Brian Holman, and here's our lineup for today's show. In Ag News, we'll take a look at local and national headlines affecting Kansas farmers. In our Ag Feature, we visit with Ken Rogers, Kansas State Representative, to get a legislative update. And in Inside Kansas Ag, KDA talks to us about last month's wildfires in Kansas. And Kansas Wheat discusses best management practices. And in News You Need to Know, we get our weekly update from the Kansas Livestock Association. We'll look back at last week's market activity with the guys from Paragon. And we'll let you know about important events coming up around the state of Kansas. Glad you could join us. Closed captioning brought to you by The Soybean Checkoff. Progress powered by Kansas farmers. KansasSoybeans.org. Ag Risk Solutions. Experience, knowledge, integrity. Your crop insurance solution, Ag Risk Solutions. Kansas Wheat Commission, leaders in the adoption of profitable innovations for wheat. Online at kswheat.com. Kansas Livestock Association, supporting our members' business interests to meet consumers' demands. KLA.org. Here's our national headlines for this week in Ag News. Farmer member organizations are disappointed with President Donald Trump's proposed budget blueprint, which includes more than $4 billion in cuts to USDA. Roger Johnson, president of the National Farmers Union, says the cuts come from USDA's discretionary spending budget, which equates to a 21% drop for programs that serve rural and farming communities across the U.S. This huge cut to discretionary spending will put rural development, conservation, and research programs on the chopping blocks, says Johnson. The budget proposal also includes more than $2 billion in cuts to EPA funding. A second case of highly pathogenic avian flu has been confirmed in southern Tennessee. The commercial chicken breeder flock is within the existing controlled quarantine zone. Following the confirmation of H7N9 high path avian flu, officials began depopulating the affected premises. It is the same strain of avian flu that was found earlier this month. Neither high path nor low path avian flu pose a risk to the food supply. The USDA is stepping up its inspections of meat imported from Brazil. This action is in response to an investigation involving several Brazilian meat packers who are accused of bribing inspectors to waive food safety requirements. Several countries, including China, Hong Kong, and the European Union, have temporarily suspended imports of Brazilian meat products. Brazil was the world's largest producer of beef and veal in 2016 and one of the top exporters. The country is also a major exporter of chicken and pork products. In local news, Kansas corn growers intend to plant 5.2 million acres this year, up 2% from 2016, according to USDA's NAS. Soybeans planted acreage is expected to be 5 million acres, up 23% from last year. Winter wheat acres seeded in the fall of 2016 are estimated at 7.5 million, down 12% from last year. Sorghum growers in Kansas intend to plant 2.5 million acres, down 19% from a year ago. Richard Jansen of Ellsworth was named the 2017 Kansas Stockman of the Year during the 47th annual Stockman Dinner in Manhattan. Industry friends recognized Jansen for his contribution to the beef industry. Speakers described him as a visionary and as a curious and accomplished cattleman. The Stockman of the Year Award is presented annually by the Livestock and Meat Industry Council. Milk production in Kansas during February 2017 totaled 272 million pounds, up 3.8% from February of 2016, according to USDA's NAS. The average number of milk cows was 151,000 head, 8,000 head more than February of 2016. Milk production per cow averaged 1,800 pounds. Up next in our Ag Feature, we get a legislative update from Kansas Representative Ken Rogers. You're watching Kansas Ag Report. Please stay tuned. This segment brought to you by Kansas Livestock Association. Supporting our members' business interests to meet consumers' demands. KLA.org. Oldie Seed Farms, carrying soil-specific seed. Find them on the web at oldieseed.com. That's O-H-L-D-E seed.com. Grass and grain, online or in the mail. Keeping Kansas farmers informed for over 60 years. Grassandgrain.com. 
Kansas Wheat Commission, leaders in the adoption of profitable innovations for wheat. Online at kswheat.com. Imagine having someone help you pick the best corn hybrids for every field on your farm. Your Oldie representative can combine your data with his data to offer a field-by-field prescription. Contact Oldie Seed today at 877-692-4555. This Medford, New Jersey school bus runs on biodiesel, and so do these. In fact, all of these buses run on clean-burning biodiesel, which is great because the more we use biodiesel in our heavy-duty vehicles, the less carbon pollution in our air. Think how great it would be if more of our school buses ran on biodiesel. More biodiesel, less carbon pollution. More is less. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. You need a partner that you can count on to be there for your business. Providing a depth of understanding to risk management issues so you don't have to. A knowledgeable support team located in your area, delivering products and services to make you more successful. The producer-funded Kansas Wheat Innovation Center was built to get improved varieties into the hands of farmers faster. Kansas Wheat, farmers advancing their future through wheat genetics research. Thanks for staying with us. We're at the state capitol. We're joined by, again, our favorite legislator in the state of Kansas, Ken Rogers. It's good to see you again. Good. You need to get out more and be your legislator. Evidently, I do. (laughs) Uh, uh, Ken, uh, if there's one word that continues to travel through the walls here in the state capitol, it's budget, budget, budget. I think it is. I mean, you know, it's typical this time of the year in the session and where we are in the first year of a a cycle, uh, we are developing the biannual budget and we're still piecing that together. It's a process, you know, they say it's, it's like making sausage and sometimes I think sausage making may even be a little cleaner than what we see and so the process is trying to find uh, putting things together and so there, there, there have been kind of a two schools of thought on a lot of people say well let's do the budget then we'll find f- financing through tax formulas and some are saying just the opposite get a tax formula then we know it's money that we can budget so really that's that's kind of where we are the house earlier in the session back in February for the first time in, in a long time and many folks should remember passed a a tax bill out Senate passed it out. Of course, the governor vetoed, vetoed it. it. Uh, House overrode. Senate didn't. So we're starting over. And so really, the House right now is kind of taking a wait and see position, uh, kind of building a package, but still waiting to see what happens in the Senate. Mm-hmm. And so the, the ultimate the idea is to get something that we can all agree on, or at least is veto proof, moving forward. The numbers are still up in the air. We're still kind of finding out more on what school finance said on adequately funding our schools. What does that mean? Does that mean $100 million, $200 million, $800 million? One of my concerns, Brian, is making sure that our most vulnerable and our small schools are part of that conversation. Mm-hmm. And as we move forward, I mean, there, there, there's a lot of concern for uh, obviously giving kids a, 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 a adequately funding to give them an opportunity Mm -hmm. and so but there's there's many conversations we have to do on that so that's it it will all kind of come together and all of a sudden boom here we are Mm -hmm. and we we look to have um, uh, more discussions on is everybody still has a plan there's so many different there's 165 different ideas I think on how to do everything so that's what we're working on. right Uh, we were three votes short in the Senate Uh, do you think that will come back around where we may be able to, to cover those three votes I, I think it'll be a different plan of some sort. Uh, there were some concerns about uh, retroactivity back the first of the year. That was probably what I understand, one of the reasons why I didn't uh, make it through the Senate. Plus, I think you can, this is continuing to be in fluid motion, so we will look at all, you know, the revenues coming in, what some projections are before we really know where we go. So I think eventually we're going to have to recreate the wheel, but I also believe the more tax votes you have, the less likely you are to get everybody to agree right. on. So that that's going to be that challenge. That's 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 why they call this politics. Right, right. right. Everybody, <laughs> everybody's got their opinion yeah. about it, and, and too many people have too many opinions, and mm-hmm. you're going to get absolutely nothing done. So we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to finish up with Ken at the State Capitol. Watch your Kansas Ag Report. We'll see you in just a minute. 
This segment brought to you by Farm Bureau, a grassroots ag organization representing the state's farmers and ranchers since 1919. KFB.org. Oldie Seed Farms, carrying soil-specific seed. Find them on the web at oldieseed.com. That's O-H-L-D-E seed.com. Grass and grain, online or in the mail. Keeping Kansas farmers informed for over 60 years. Grassandgrain.com. Kansas Weed Commission, leaders in the adoption of profitable innovations for wheat. Online at kswheat.com. Thanks for staying with us. We're at the State Capitol here in Topeka, and we're joined by Ken Rogers. And uh, in the first segment, we're kind of talking about budget, and we could probably talk for several days about the budget and kind of what's going on with that, but there's other things going on in the state. Uh, water and environment being one of those. Of course, the wildfires, you know, hamper the environment. Right. Uh, we are in a right. drought. We continue in a, a five-year circle of drought uh, that is never-ending, and that really makes your job, your guys' job tough on your uh, on the committee that you set right. up. Well, this year, new leadership decided to pull water and environment out of the House Ag Committee and make it its own committee. So we applaud them for that effort, realizing that water is so critical to the success of our state. And so this past legislative session, we, we wanted to find the real value of water. And that's, that's beyond just finding a funding source for the water, say water plan or the, or the uh, um, Blue Ribbon Commission's findings. And so we spent a lot of stuff from all the stakeholders, come up with a plan that is we're really still developing it. It wasn't really quite uh, where people wanted to be. But so what we're trying to do though is trying to work with leadership and find some programs that will be good for the whole state. Uh, we're going to propose uh, doing some things with um, uh, crops that don't use much water. Hopefully, partner with, with, like with, with, with our friends at the uh, Innovation Center there at Kansas State. Uh, also, uh, working hopefully with Milford Reservoir with the blue-green algae situation. Some cleanup things. Uh, we're trying to work with all the stakeholders, looking at more innovative um, uh, irrigation farms in the Southwest. And, and there's 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 some small victories in a sense, but we want to make sure the stakeholders know that we, as a legislator, are concerned. I mean, obviously, if we if we had the sources to fully fund you know the water plan through general fund uh, that would that would be fine but right now we don't and so the situation is uh, we're still we're still working on that but but I think we'll see in the whole appropriations process as we get further on in you know the, la the last few days of the session we'll see where that goes and so that's the hope is that the momentum we have we keep all stakeholders and then we come back with some other things and of course the environment we haven't had a chance to touch on much right. I think we'll work on some environmental things as well and not only that, uh, you got to take into consideration the governor's 50-year plan on water, uh, what Tracy Streeter and his department are doing as far as is, uh, the John Redmond project just got the, or is under the way, underway mm -hmm. right now. So there's a lot of things going on in the state when it comes to water. Yeah, some of those things have been, you know, the, the, the Redmond dredging project has been done, but now how do you capitalize on that? And, and looking at a, few, a lot of other things right. of, of how to best, you know, I think that's as we look moving forward, is try to find interesting or unique ways of funding. And I think you'll see maybe if, if our committee starts that, other committees will, will do that. I think simply the days of saying, give me a blank amount of money, I'll find a way to spend it, are probably over. Right. You, you, you've got to come, not only with education, water, anything, you've got to come and say, uh, here are our projects, and this is why it benefits the state. Mm -hmm. And so whether it be, you may think it's a regional project, but it really, it does have statewide impact. So the, even though maybe the days aren't that many left of the session, we've got a lot of things to do and it'll be a rapid pace. Perfect, well, we will follow up with Kim before the end of session and bring you any information when it comes to the environment and water. You're watching Kansas Ag Report. We'll see you in just a minute. If you would like to advertise your business on Kansas Ag Report, give us a call, 785-580-3287. Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture, represents grassroots agriculture. The state's largest and most powerful farm organization stands up for its members through leadership development, agriculture education, legal defense, environmental advocacy, farm safety, and risk management. Members also enjoy money-saving benefits. To join our organization today or to learn more, go to www.kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter.
One month ago, wildfires ripped through more than 20 counties and burned 650,000 acres in Kansas. And though time has gone by, the long road to rebuilding is just beginning. The fire resulted in the loss of thousands of head of livestock and consumed more than 3,700 miles of fencing, along with houses, barns, and farm and ranch equipment. Families throughout the area are facing enormous struggle as they work to recover from this disaster. Yet in the midst of the heartbreaking stories of loss, we've also heard heartwarming stories of communities coming together to support each other, neighbors working around the clock to offer help, generosity from near and far as trucks rolled in loaded with hay, fencing supplies, food, and volunteers from throughout the country, stories of service from FFA chapters and 4-H clubs, college students, and church groups, whether that service took the form of fundraisers or of spring breaks spent rebuilding. We want to thank all of you who have given of your time and treasure to support those whose lives have been affected by these fires. A month has gone by, but there is much work yet to be done. Recovering from a disaster of this magnitude will take time, and as resilient as Kansas farmers and ranchers may be, they will continue to need assistance. There are several ways to provide support, and we encourage you to consider a contribution to one of the agricultural organizations or community foundations. The Kansas Department of Agriculture's Wildfire Recovery Resources webpage provides links to these organizations along with other information for those directly affected at agriculture.ks.gov wildfire. Thank you for all you have done and all you will continue to do as we come together as an agricultural community. Researchers at Kansas State University are coming together to help farmers get a bigger bang for their buck by finding management practices that can increase yields while still preserving the land. Romulo Loyato, Wheat and Forages Production Agronomist with K-State Research and Extension, says after performing long-term research of the yield potential in the region, we have found that we have a yield gap that can be reduced through management. This yield gap being the difference between what we produce now compared to what we could potentially produce. Loyato and his team have previously performed related research that shows the possibility for yields in central Kansas to increase about 10 to 20 percent while still maintaining profitability and stewardship of the land. The next step of the research is to determine exactly which management practices should be improved to accomplish that. In addition, the research shows that there's approximately a 30 to 35 bushel per acre yield gap between current yields and the yield potential, largely due to substandard wheat management practices. Loyato says we have a very low input control, which is representing our average farmer. And then on the other extreme of things, we have a very high input crop where we have several improved management practices. By using this approach, Loyato and his team will be able to differentiate wheat yields resulting from intensive management practices as opposed to those from standard management. This segment brought to you by Farm Bureau, a grassroots ag organization representing the state's farmers and ranchers since 1919. KFB.org. Oldie Seed Farms, carrying soil-specific seed. Find them on the web at oldieseed.com. That's O-H-L-D-E seed. Dot com. Grass and grain, online or in the mail. Keeping Kansas farmers informed for over 60 years. Grassandgrain.com. Kansas Weed Commission, leaders in the adoption of profitable innovations for wheat. Online at kswheat.com. Premier Farm and Home has what you need to make your lawn the best in the neighborhood. Hi, I'm Ken. We choose Premier Farm and Home for the professional look that we do ourselves. Feel free to stop in. You can also visit our website at heycow.com. I will take action against herbicide resistant weeds. I will know my weeds and I will stop them before they go to seed. I will do whatever it takes to give my crops the upper hand and I will use multiple herbicide sites of action because every action counts. I will take action, this time, for all time. You need a partner that you can count on to be there for your business. Providing a depth of understanding to risk management issues so you don't have to. A knowledgeable support team located in your area, delivering products and services to make you more successful. The producer-funded Kansas Wheat Innovation Center was built to get improved varieties into the hands of farmers faster. 
Kansas Wheat, Farmers Advancing Their Future Through Wheat Genetics Research. Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture, represents grassroots agriculture. The state's largest and most powerful farm organization stands up for its members through leadership development, agriculture education, legal defense, environmental advocacy, farm safety, and risk management. Members also enjoy money-saving benefits. To join our organization today or to learn more, go to www.kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. This Medford, New Jersey school bus runs on biodiesel, and so do these. In fact, all of these buses run on clean-burning biodiesel, which is great because the more we use biodiesel in our heavy-duty vehicles, the less carbon pollution in our air. Think how great it would be if more of our school buses ran on biodiesel. More biodiesel, less carbon pollution. More is less. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. Imagine having someone help you pick the best corn hybrids for every field on your farm. Your oldie representative can combine your data with his data to offer a field-by-field -field prescription. Contact Oldie Seed today at 877-692-4555. Kansas Livestock Association lobbyists monitored several issues this week at the state capitol, including final action on bills important to livestock producers. The Kansas Senate passed House Bill 2095, which would increase the legal gross vehicle weight limit from 85,500 pounds to 90,000 pounds for trucks equipped with a six-axle semi-trailer combination that are hauling agricultural inputs and commodities. This KLA-supported bill previously passed the House. A House-Senate conference committee met to discuss changes made by the Senate. It's expected House Bill 2095 will receive final action and be sent to the governor for his signature. The Kansas House passed a KLA-supported bill that would modify the current water conservation area law and provide more flexibility for feed yards and dairies in using existing water rights. The bill also includes changes for consideration of a water right impairment. Under current law, a water right holder can either go straight to district court or file a complaint with the chief engineer of the Division of Water Resources. Senate Bill 46 would funnel all impairment cases through the chief engineer before a water right holder could go to district court. Senate Bill 46 has passed both chambers and is being reviewed by a House Senate Conference Committee. Good morning, I'm Darren Van Vactor with Paragon Ag. The March 31st Prospective Plantings and Quarterly Stocks Report has come and gone as 2017's first quarter came to a close. Going into the report during March, corn, beans, and wheat gave up their gains since the first of the year. The majority of analysts were expecting record bean acres planted, but were left wondering where the additional acres would come from. Well, after the dust settled, soybeans came in bearishly above expectations at a record 89.5 million acres. Conversely, corn posted a friendly 89.99 million acres, 1 million under pre-report expectations, while wheat quietly posted a neutral 32 and 3 quarter million acres. As for the quarterly stocks, corn, beans, and wheat all fell neutrally within the expected range. Now, with, with one of the biggest reports of the year behind us, our focus will shift to planning progress for corn and beans, crop conditions for corn, beans, and wheat, and of course the biggest question mark of all, weather. Yes, Mother Nature will again swing the biggest stick in determining how this crop year plays out. While there is a lot of bear sentiment out there, we have an awful lot of time left. Keep in mind, this is the perspective plantings, not final and certainly not harvested. If you have questions about the markets or how your operation can better navigate them, please contact us here at Paragon Ag Advisors, 888-452-8751. I'm Darren Van Vactor. Be safe and have a great week.
closed captioning brought to you by the soybean checkoff progress powered by kansas farmers kansassoybeans.org ag risk solutions experience knowledge integrity your crop insurance solution ag risk solutions kansas weed commission leaders in the adoption of profitable innovations for wheat online at kswheat.com kansas livestock association supporting our members business interests to meet consumers demands kla.org well that's our show for today i hope you'll join us each week for more news and information about agriculture in the state of kansas i'm brian holman and thanks for watching I will take action against herbicide-resistant weeds. I will know my weeds, and I will stop them before they go to seed. I will do whatever it takes to give my crops the upper hand, and I will use multiple herbicide sites of action because every action counts. I will take action, this time for all time. You need a partner that you can count on to be there for your business. Providing a depth of understanding to risk management issues so you don't have to. A knowledgeable support team located in your area, delivering products and services to make you more successful. Premier Farm and Home has what you need to make your lawn the best in the neighborhood. Hi, I'm Ken. We choose Premier Farm and Home for the professional look that we do ourselves. Feel free to stop in. You can also visit our website at heycow.com.